Hi guys, Will Terry here, and this video is going to be called Do You Really Want to Be an Illustrator? And as you can probably tell, I am in the great outdoors. This is my personal sanctuary up here. I'm about a mile up. I haven't made a video outside in a while, and I, I get tired of making them in the studio. And so, hey, look, my dogs are leaving. They think that we're leaving right now. We're not going anywhere. We're making a video. <laughs> um, I get tired of the backdrop of my studio, and I also like the channels. I like to follow channels where they mix it up a little bit, so that's what I'm doing out here today. This is like a 360 of where I am. And I hiked up, this is like part of my exercise too. So I hiked up from uh, way down over there somewhere. And uh, usually this is covered with snow and I can snowboard down it. This is the road I ride my bike on. Started riding my bike on a lot. Okay, so uh, a few announcements. Uh, my texture painting class at svslearn.com is uh, about halfway full, so there's still room in that. Um, I did. I am putting that in our subscription, and so uh, it will... Uh, this is probably one of the reasons why it didn't sell out right away, is because a lot of people are going to pick it up in the subscription, which is pretty smart if you want to save money. But if you want feedback, it's there. Okay, that's my shameless plug. And now let's talk about, do you really want to be an illustrator? And this topic might actually not be what you think it is. Um, it might actually go in a different direction. But one of my thoughts was, as I was actually thinking about this topic, and thinking about a, a bunch of different things that have happened lately, I started realizing and thinking that, you know, we start out as an artist when we're when we first pick up crayons or first pick up a pencil and start drawing, right? And you know, we're I mean that's our that's our thing. We we create whatever we want. And at some point along the way we get this idea that working and doing artwork um, for money is what we really want to do. And my question is is do we really want to be an illustrator and no this isn't like a confessional oh and there's a guy that was up here i'm gonna break for a second and show you this guy he's like is like uh skateboarding down oh there he is maybe i can maybe you'll be able to see him here in just a second he's skateboarding down the part that doesn't have snow on it and I was talking to him for a while, and now he's not doing it. So I'm gonna keep talking, and if I see him go, I'll show you. Um, this isn't a confessional. I know, let's see. There we go, get the light working right. On me being upset with something that happened uh, with a job or anything like that. This is more of me kind of having reflections on my career as an illustrator and just different things that I've seen in other people's lives and different problems that I've seen other people have and also being kind of afraid in some ways to really ask and ask and or demand what we want out of life what we want out of our career and um, so the life cycle that I see as an illustrator goes something like this. You start out as an artist, and then you, uh, you transition to student. And then, so you work as a student for a while. And at some point, you get this idea that you can make money doing it. And maybe you go to college. Maybe you don't. Maybe you take some online classes. Gee, I wonder where you could do that. Um, and then you, you get to a point where your work is good enough that you think, well, maybe it's sellable. And maybe you do a job for a family friend or for, for uh, uh, a local business or something. And that's what I did. I got a job, um, and I've talked about this on the channel before, where I got a job with a family friend doing calligraphy. I also got a job doing a painting once for a family friend. Um, and when you get that little 
spark of, wow, I can, instead of, you know, doing some tasks that I hate doing, I could actually do something that I love and make money at it. All of a sudden that kind of ignites a bug in a lot of us as to, wouldn't this be great if this were, were my everyday life and I would just make art for money. And I would have a boss and they would tell me what to draw and I would draw it and I would get paid and life would be perfect. And um, and so then you, you get maybe a few jobs like that and maybe you actually do start working as an illustrator and you're working for the worst clients because usually illustrators start out working for the the lowest bottom of the barrel clients and there's nothing wrong with that and they sh and you should that's a there those jobs are easier to get they're going to pay less but they're um, they're not going to be able to afford the the top shelf illustrators the ones that have been doing it forever and so um, so you maybe you cut your teeth and you on those smaller jobs and you kind of learn the ropes a little bit and then you move up and you start doing bigger and better jobs and life is good but there seems to always be that point in an illustrator's life and I've seen this so many times where even the top guys and gals that are working as illustrators they'll get to a point where they can't they, they don't like um, they don't like being told what to do I, I don't know any other way to put it more simply than that um, and, and this is going to, for some people, this is going to sound spoiled. I know if I were hearing this when I was first starting out and all I could dream about was getting a job, I would think, well, then those people need to, um, be thankful for what they have and stop complaining and just be grateful. But I would say one thing that I've learned in life is that as humans, one of our, one of the, the characteristics of a human being is that we are seldom c content and I think that is that can be a bad thing but I also think that that can be a good thing and I think in striving for perfection and striving to better oneself and to uh, create better work there will come a time where your bosses as an illustrator know much less than you do as, a, as an artist uh, where your sensibilities where your um, your ability, your design ability is better than the art directors that you're working for. Not always, uh, but sometimes. And you might get a job or two every now and then where you realize that the decisions that are being made, that you're, the, the changes that you're being asked to make on your illustrations, the or just the illustrations themselves, the direction that you're getting, is really bad. and. That is super frustrating. Oh, there goes the guy right there. I don't know if you can see him. Going down there. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, just kind of a little squirrel. So, um, so there, yeah, so there's this, this discontentment. There's this um, desire to want more control. Uh, I think I think everybody desires more control in their life. I mean, I don't really know anybody who, if you describe what it is to be an illustrator, right? Um, you know, is it? You know, how many people said when they when they when they decided they wanted to be an illustrator? What I really want is lack of control over my art. What I really want is. Um, someone else telling me no on the things that I want to paint or draw. Uh, what I really want is someone to um, uh, not value my ideas that I think are great ideas and I can see the vision of them and they can't and so I have to do their idea which is dumb. I mean none of us really signed up, none of us really ever said that. But that's what happens a lot of times for illustrators. And so um, that's kind of the thought that I had. And one of the reasons was, and I'm just gonna check my notes here really quickly. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm working right now, I've got a job and it's actually going really well uh, for a, a large publishing company. 
uh, it's not the Bonaparte book, it's another one. Um, and it's, it's actually a story that's going to go in a textbook. So it's not a high profile job by any means. Um, and I have learned how to protect myself from spending a lot of time spinning my wheels on, on um, ideas that may not pan out, right? Uh, that, that might not work, that the art director I, I think will probably change this. So I figured out different ways and one of those ways is you know I will send sketches to the art director alone for your eyes only and I'll say you know please don't pass this on to the team. This is just to get a, an initial idea on whether I'm even on the right track or not because the worst thing in the world is to spend time doing something um, where you put a lot of time and effort into it and you're not even close and so you're going to have to completely scrap the sketches and start on something totally different. So I like to I like to do things like that. That can be scary if you don't if you don't have a track record and if you're brand new and you try to do that and um, you know like if, if, if an art director is kind of taking a chance on you because you're a beginner uh, and you send in really crappy sketches it might really scare the crap out of them. So I'd be in the beginning, I would do tighter sketches on the first rounds, but now I'll just really rough stuff out and and just just do like you know a little more than a stick figure with gestures, but with with like you know if it's a, if it, let's say it's a chef, he'll have a little indication of the chef's hat, and but it'll be gesture heavy, um, so you can really tell what's happening. You can tell size of character. You can tell even expression. Um, you can tell um, basic clothing and things like that, but you just are not spending any time polishing up the sketch or really working out anatomy and things like that. It's just really super loose. Those are, and there's a lot of techniques and a lot of things that you can do to kind of protect yourself. But you know, you, you go through the, I, I think that what ends up happening, the evolution of an artist is actually, I, I'm gonna call it artist to artist. Because you start out as an artist, you become an illustrator. Now, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm talking to illustrators or those who want to be illustrators. Um, you start out as an artist, you become a student, you become a beginning illustrator, you become an intermediate illustrator, you become an, a master illustrator, and a lot of those guys and gals end up becoming artists again. And by that I mean they start creating their own fill in the blank, right? Their own books, they start writing a lot of them. I know a lot of illustrators who have become authors. And the difference there is when you're illustrating your own story, right? You're, you have created the whole project. And so like you're your own boss. So now when you put on your illustrator hat to illustrate your own story, you, the artist, the, the author in you gets to tell the illustrator what to do, but because you're the same person, no one's really telling you what to do, right? I mean, it sounds silly, but like you have to answer questions for yourself. Like, how would I do this? What would I tell myself if I were the author? This is my vision as the author. And you start to see things in a different way. That's one way. Um, a lot of illustrators end up doing gallery work. A lot of illustrators uh, end up doing high-end commissions where I guess they still have a boss, but a lot of a lot of the artists that I know will come up with contracts where they'll they might take a little bit less money, but they'll tell their clients, um, if I take your commission, I'm going to give you you're gonna you're basically gonna pay me a retainer to start, and then I'm gonna make this painting and you're gonna buy the painting, and this is what you're gonna get, and I'm gonna create this painting and and that's the way it is because I've worked my way up to a certain point where. Um, I'm not taking art direction from a non-artist person, especially not uh, a non-artist. Now there are a lot of people who do portraiture and who do commission work where they have to. And we're gonna have a helicopter flying over, of course. So anyway, I see artists um, or illustrators turning to doing their own projects, um, doing their own um, cre their own creations simply because they've pretty much outgrown um, they, they've they've outgrown their how do I say this their desire 
to be controlled, I guess. There's, there's really no other way to put it. Um, and one of the things that got me thinking about this was actually a friend, a very close friend that I have who, um, let's just say he has worked in-house I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about specifics, um, because I, you know, I don't want him to feel bad. And and he knows we we talk about this a lot. And and you know, he kind of cried on my shoulder the other day. But anyway, he was working in house, and he just kind of came out and said, "I lost my job. I got fired." And um, we talked about it. And what it basically came down to, when you really boil it down to a nutshell, what happened was. Um, he did not advance in this in his career path into management and uh, when you work as an in-house artist I think for job security job protection you really need to be trying to move into a management role um, it's it's uh, and there's a lot of reasons for it I mean pay is one of them but job security is another and quite frankly you know he got kind of got bitter because he was being controlled by people that were much younger than him and you know we're about the same age and it, it just got so frustrating for him to um, show up to work and have the stuff that he was designing kind of rejected and looked over by people that he knows are not as good this person is really good in design and uh, and so anyway one thing led to another. He didn't really he didn't really look or fit in with the with the the hip group, and he kind of got left out and kind of got. Uh, it, what it really looks like is that they made an excuse on why they were letting him go in favor of hiring someone else. And I look at that and I think you know that's that's part of the the cycle of working. Um, as an artist is that if you're not if you're not thinking of what's coming next Then that sort of thing could end up happening to you too where you find yourself um, You know where you've kind of outgrown your job or you've kind of outgrown um, The kind of bosses that you have kind of telling you what to do and then you wind up in a situation where you are bitter where you do feel like uh, You do feel like you should be earning more, but you're not and so then you, maybe you don't treat the job as well as you should. Maybe your attitude isn't quite as good as it should be. Um, I had those feelings when I was uh, living in California. And I've, I've mentioned this before on these videos where, you know, I almost became a prison guard because my wife had gotten sick, uh, had gotten an autoimmune disease. My son got an autoimmune disease. She was going to lose her teaching job uh, because she couldn't work anymore because of her illness. And... Um, and so I was, I was angry that I wasn't making more as an illustrator when I saw all the people around me and they were prison guards and they were making as much or more than me, but they had really good health insurance and, and that was the biggest difference. And, and you hear it, I had gone to college and they didn't. You know, they got out of high school and just went to work in the prison and were making really good money. And I remember having those feelings of resentment and those feelings aren't good. Uh, you know, uh, having feelings of gratitude is what really, I mean, that's what we, as humans, that's really what we gravitate towards. You know, we really gravitate towards people that are positive and they give off a positive vibe. And we want to, we want to get some of what they have. We want to be around them. And so when you're, when you're negative, uh, it, it, it's almost like repellent and it shows, you know, and so, um, if you feel like you're heading down that path, I think it's really time to start looking ahead and saying, you know, what do people do? What, what do most artists do? Um, what's their evolutionary process? Like, where do they end up when they get old? Um, the successful ones, what happens? What, what do they end up doing and trying to follow that path? Um, it's, it's easy to think that when you become an illustrator, the, that that's it. Your life is just going to be perfect and you're going to be happy. But I can promise you that other problems will unfold. It's just, it's just natural. And you'll be dealing with those other problems. And your, your new normal will be, yeah, I make decent money as an illustrator. making, And some people make really good money. But 
is that fulfilling me as an artist? And I would suspect that for most people, there's going to be a lot more that fulfills you as an artist. Like, are you able to create the kind of artwork that you really want to create? Um, and so I think begin with the end in mind and work towards that goal. Um, if you take a lesson out of a lot of illustrators uh, playbooks, what a lot of them do is they're constantly working on their portfolio while they're taking on freelance work and the ones that I have seen that have atrophied as illustrators uh, that that have become obsolete that are not even illustrating anymore one of the cardinal sins is they treated their illustration freelance work as a job and as soon as they were done they went and did something else instead of and I'm not saying I'm not suggesting that you can't have a life outside of illustration that you can't have hobbies that you can't have things that you do for fun but when all you're looking forward to is putting the pencil or paintbrush down and not working on your art, working on creating the stuff that you really want to create, then you'll probably, you probably won't last because you're not working on that next thing. And the one thing I've learned is nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. And, uh, and so you've, you've got to, you always have to realize if you're up, there's probably a down coming. But there doesn't have to be a down if you're working on that next thing because then you can shift into the next thing, whatever that may be. So anyway, these are kind of the thoughts for this, this I, I want to say this week's video, but I haven't been doing weekly videos. So uh, this is the thought for this video. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Maybe I'll get some shots of the dogs as we're walking back down. Uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Let's go. Go on, Mandy.